Uh, good morning and uh, welcome back once again uh, to this uh, second lecture uh, especially about the ruby or sobelo spaces. So, in the last uh, part of the last talk we said we will discuss uh, uh, 3 to 4 issues uh, about the sobelo spaces. These are all deeper studied. So, you have to spend substantial amount of time to get an understanding of that. So, though we are uh, presenting it here as simple as possible, but uh, things are not that easy. So, you have to work out the problems, work out uh, results. Uh, so, please try to spend uh, a decent amount of time if you want to get a feeling of the same. Just by reading and listening uh, will not lead you to anything. Listening is important. After the listening, you should go back to and study that. So, let us uh, start with uh, uh, prolongations. What are these prolongations? Okay. These are called extension. So, to have extensions of the functions defined, extensions of function defined on omega. So, whenever you have a domain omega, it is important to quite often you will see that technicality in fact, you have already seen the technicality. Suppose, you have a bigger domain omega tilde and a function u is given here. So, can you extend to this portion or can you extend to the r n? And that extension is should not be very arbitrary. Okay, uh, you need to have some control on the extension. Okay, not defining something huge. So you will be as a solution. The advantages is that sometimes near the boundary it will be difficult to work on. So you need an extended function outside the boundary. So you get some freedom to work. The and another important thing is that when you extend to all of R n you will be able to use the global theory like Fourier transform and uh, convolutions. Okay. The Fourier transform and convolutions are defined on R n in the full space. Uh, so, that powerful theory of Fourier transform and, and convolutions uh, can be used to extend that function and then conclude about the in the domain. So, the in, in extensions of functions uh, plays a vital role in the analysis of PDEs. But then uh, uh, the extensions are not that trivial. Suppose u is in LP of omega. So, they are looking for trivial extension, okay, any p, okay, and then define trivial extension. We always call trivial extension unless otherwise the trivial extension we denote by tilde, okay. So, you define u tilde of x uh, is equal to u x in omega in omega and you define 0 outside that of course, is an extension okay. and this is called trivial extension and that immediately can because it is an additive the LP norms are just additive things. Uh, you can integrations can be added that one and you will get uh, u tilde is in LP of R n you see or L p of omega tilde whichever be the omega tilde bigger domain where you, the big uh, yeah, big domain omega tilde. But this is not true in H, uh, this is not true for W m p functions in general functions in general of course, there will be special cases where that trivial extension may work. For example, if you want to see that you have seen this example, so you look at u identically 1 that is in your h 1 of 0 to 1, but if you come uh, your uh, but the trivial extension but 
u tilde is not in h 1 of r. The thing is that of course, u tilde indeed u tilde is in L p of r L 2 of r we are working with L 2. L 2 of r, but you want to see also its derivative distributional derivative your u tilde will be delta 1 minus delta 0. This is a Dirac delta this is not in L 2 of r which you have seen that one. So, the question is that in prolongations question is that does there exist non trivial extensions exist non trivial extensions. So, zero extension may not work, but uh, does the that is what in the prolongation things uh, does there exist non trivial extension. As I said the extension should have properties. So, basically what we are looking is that does there exist does there exist linear continuous operator p from say let us restrict to h 1 ok. It can apply to other spaces as well h 1 of omega to h 1 of r n. So, it is linear continuous that means, uh, you need this estimate. So, the extended function uh, the, uh, so what are the properties and the p u should be equal to u in omega and that is a very important thing is not only an extension and you need to have a control on that that is what basically the continuity tells you p u in h 1 of r n should be bounded by the with a constant of course, bounded by u in h 1 of omega. Okay. So, that means, uh, you can control the extended function, but you will see much more than that one. Okay. So, you can apply it to any h m if you want it say h m, if you want you can h m. So, whenever you have that one, you have uh, this thing. So, this is very very important to do that one. So, such an extension theorem. Okay. So, the results are there such an extension exists such a extension such an extension on such an extension on the case of say h 1 exists if omega is c 1. This is a regularity on the domain. I will uh, briefly describe you again Disc regularity on d omega or omega does not matter regularity means inside it is always regular. So, the regularity of a domain means regularity of the boundary for h m we may need omega is of class you have de, uh, seen this in detail in the last class, but I will recall that class C m. So, you need more and more regularity if you want to think. Okay. So, the in other words uh, you need uh, higher regularity higher regularity. Okay. All right. So, let me tell you little bit about the, uh, the. So, if the boundary is flat things are easy if the boundary the problem is boundary is curved if the boundary 
is flat like R n plus I will not explain you know these spaces or Q plus then extensions can be given by extensions can be given by reflection be given by appropriate reflections appropriate reflection what is that basically means so you have your thing here and this is your so any point here this is your xn and these are all will be using soon and this will be your x prime x n ok. So, the this is your r n plus ok this is your r n plus you have and this is your x prime 0 identified with r n minus 1 ok. So, you can reflect the point here and you get your x prime x n you can define if, uh, if you if a value u is given in say h1 of h1 or other places h1 of r n plus. So, it is defined only in the upper half of the plane, but you can define here by defining um, u of x prime this is x prime minus n ok x prime x n you see can reflect it and probably at sometimes in certain cases you may have to take other signs etcetera, but uh, you can do this one to get an extension and this kind of reflections uh, will not change the uh, h1 norm because h1 norm of the bottom r n minus will be the same as r n plus uh, and so the total h1 norm will be twice of the norm of the upper half. This is the same thing with your uh, I am doing because these spaces you will be using it. So, this is your q plus this is your q plus the full thing and you have your full q here. That means, any point here x prime x n basically mod x prime means less than 1 and x n positive. So, you can do the same reflection here if you uh, and you can define the values. So, you can get the extensions in the uh, domain thing. What about uh, general omega? What about general omega? This you have discussed a lot, uh, but let me tell you uh, what uh, so what is the meaning omega is of type uh, is of class. C 1. Okay. Let me quickly tell you what it is. So, you have your domain here omega C 1 here and uh, uh, what does it says that so and you have your Q here yeah, you have your Q this is your Q the full domain is your Q. Okay. So, for every point you are telling the existence of some map. So, every point here, so you can have you this one. Okay. So, what you need is a mapping from here some map q. So, and which should be a bijection. So, you are existence of a neighborhood you are demanding every point on the boundary should have a neighborhood and this maps is a bijection. So, you have your not q. So, q is already used. So, let me use some other map uh, some not uh, some other notation. Say g you have your g inverse. So, uh, so basically g is a map from the q to some neighborhood u ok. If th so, this is the x point so, this neighborhood here. So, there should be an existence of that one ok that neighborhood. So, that g is in c 1 of q g inverse 
is in C1 of ux. Okay. So, it is a bijection with that map. So, that you have your thing. And uh, uh, so, if you are uh, saying that omega is of class C k, you demand g is in C k. Okay. And uh, g g inverse is in class C k. Okay. Extensions are also important to get your some of the density theory. Okay. So, the uh, issue is that you have to, so how do you do the extension? So, you uh, something is given here and this is mapped to, this portion is mapped to here, you see. And then you extend it, you extend you get extension here and then once you get an extension you come back here. So, what do you do uh, finally, uh, uh, to do that, so what you can do is that, so if you have a domain omega, you every point you do these things here like that and then use your whatever it is called a partition of unity, partition of unity to get an extension to a neighborhood that is what you do it by using that thing you can get an extension to a neighborhood. Okay. Once you get a partition of unity and an extension to a small neighborhood you can do little more using what are called the test functions. You can use some test functions which also we have constructed what are these test function? So, you get an extension from u, you get an extension p u, p tilde of u to some neighborhood, okay. some neighborhood you do that one and then use these test functions, test functions are of this form which is uh, uh, identically not identically one phi is in so phi is in d of r n okay and phi identically one in some neighborhood some neighborhood of omega and phi equal to 0 outside some neighborhood such construction you can do it outside another neighborhood another neighborhood such constructions we are plenty used. So, basically you have an omega here and you have some sort of an omega tilde here. So, here I am recalling this not only for this introduction of this one, so that you will be using it again. So, phi is identically 1 in this neighborhood and then you choose another neighborhood and phi is 0 here identically 0. So, you see phi is 0 here, phi is 1 here and then that. Then uh, use that to define your extensions p u that is nothing but the phi p tilde of u okay. and that means this is equal to u. So, p u equal to u because we identically one p tilde of u is equal to u inside omega. So, p u equal to u in omega and it is 0 outside a neighborhood you see outside a neighborhood. So, basically you can construct phi extension as small as in a neighborhood. Okay. After that it is 0. So, you remaining it is 0 you cannot just do that one from you you can extend to some time and then can extend it to be 0. So, you can do. So, these are the kind of 
things you have to learn like uh, what is partition of unity all these constructions of these test functions. So, the one of the important questions uh, you might ask uh, uh, is how, uh, and that is called uh, so if you have a C 1 you can do this if you want to higher regularity you cannot do that. So, that is a definition of C 1 you can get such neighborhoods ok. Your, okay. So, the uh, question you might ask uh, is uh, whether P u this extended function retains the W 1 P spaces. Yes, under this smooth maps uh, you have the change of variable Maybe I will discuss a little bit about the change of variable. You can actually show that uh, your P u if u is in W 1 P of omega and is of class C 1 the extended function u is also the P u function is in W 1 it will not pick up the extensions are done in such a way that it will not pick up any uh, singularities like a Dirac delta. So, that is our problem you do not want to pick up when you compute its distributional derivative it should not pick up uh, anything which are not functions. Uh, one other thing is the Dirac delta type functions ok. So, let me do now with this prolongation thing now let me recall a couple of results not too much couple of results maybe uh, I write it out density density theorems there are many th uh, results. So, two important things uh, I will mention it. So, uh, one result you know that is the first result which you know is that d of r n is dense in h m of h 1 or h m h m of r n. That means, every function h 1 of r n can be approximated by d of r n use cut off functions Fourier term, convolutions and uh, mollifiers and all that you have to do that way. The other result if omega is C 1 that will imply you extension ok extension operator P u in h 1 of r n I am not going to give you all the details h 1 of r n, but then P u is in h 1 of r n P u can be approximated by d of r n functions uh, and d of r n functions can be restricted to your omega of course, you would not get uh, d omega functions, but you get c infinity functions. So, uh, so that way uh, in this case uh, for every u so, this you need omega is smooth. So, if u is in w 1 h 1 of omega <coughs> then there exists u m not in d omega, but it reaches in d of r n such that u m converges to u in <coughs> u m converges to u in h 1 of omega. So, you see so you can still approximate your functions uh, via smooth functions. There is a more general uh, slightly general theorem you <coughs> for, for any if domain. So, you are not assuming the smoothness if you do not assume the smoothness you do not get the this results, uh, but you can still get the approximation inside omega on a convex thing. So, if u is in h 1 of omega <coughs> then there exists u m in d of r n such that of course, u m is since it is a density. So, uh, you get u m converges to u 
in L p of omega, but when you have your grade u m it will not uh, you would not get at the boundary. So, you will have your omega converges to grade u restricted to omega for in L p of omega for a for uh, omega is compactly contained in omega. You can use that. So, the idea is that uh, again use some convolutions and things like that and the proof of such things you have already think. One last remark in this density theorem this is actually a more uh, general theorem probably the proof is much more is called Mayer's and Serin theorem. Serin theorem which tells you you are h 1 of omega is something it is not that you are see the earlier functions are c infinity of omega bar. Okay. So, you can use this one c infinity of omega dense in so you have dense in h 1 of omega. Okay. So, before completing this uh, talk may be one last change of variable formula and okay. So, with the change of formula a couple of change of formula I will uh, uh, stop it is also important change of formula. Or rather we call it uh, change of variable. A couple of results in this direction let me call it. So, suppose it is important for you always make a change of variable in when you have an integration. So, one domain to another domain when it goes. Uh, so, suppose you have two domains omega 1 and then omega 2 and you have a map g here. Okay. So, you want to say be a bijection okay. and uh, you assume g uh, is in uh, C 1 of omega 1 g inverse is in omega 2 and uh, you also need uh, a sum control on d i g of g j uh, d i of g j and d i of g j inverse consists of some boundedness on its derivative consists of uh, L infinity functions. Okay. So, it gives you and uh, some derivatives then the main thing okay. when u is in L p of omega 2 implies g composition u composition with g right this will be a function defined on omega 1 this is in L p of omega 1. So, you see under a smooth transformation uh, the it preserves the L, t, L p spaces as well as uh, Sobolev spaces w 1 p of omega 2 implies u composition g is in L p of omega 1 w 1 p of omega 2. w 1 p of omega 2. Once you want to know that then you also want to know its derivative. So, you are d j of u composition g change of variable formula now summation you have d i of u evaluated at g into d j of g i for i equal to 1 to n. So, you have this 
is similar to the classical formula as distributions. Okay. These functions are smooth function, uh, not only L infinity functions, uh, so there is no issue. Okay. Uh, there are a couple of more results, maybe I will use a different thing and uh, some two results. So, another results, uh, suppose g is in c 1 of r, okay. so this let me couple c 1 of r with g 0 is equal to 0 and suppose you have a control on its derivative that is a derivative is less than or equal to m and uh, so g is from c 1 r to r then u is in w 1 p of omega implies u composition g or here anything g composition u is in w 1 p of omega. So, the space is not changing because g is from r to r and you have your di of g composition u is equal to g prime of these are all your standard formula. Okay. So, all this you have seen it in some form or other. So, basically you, you prove these things for the classical formula use density results to get such theorem. And another thing is a little important we will be using it. So, suppose g is not smooth, suppose g is only Lipschitz on R. I will tell you one result which we want here with g 0 is equal to 0 omega bounded. So, then u is in h 1 naught of omega implies uh, g composition u is in h 1 naught of omega similarly uh, which you can prove this one. The corollary of this is uh, very important which we will be using uh, you take g t equal to mod t apply this results this will imply that if u is in h 1 naught then then your u plus the positive part of u the negative of negative part of u minus u and mod u these are all in h 1 naught of omega. So, we may use this either during the Eigen value problem study or some of the situations. Okay. u plus is maximum of u 0, u minus is maximum of minus u 0 okay. and uh, all that uh, thing. And once so u plus u minus are there mod u is also in h 1 naught of omega. So, these facts so whatever we are writing and uh, this thing we will do. So, we will stop here in this lecture and uh, we will continue one more uh, lecture on trace theory. We will discuss little bit about uh, trace theory in the next class. Thank you. Thank you very much.